Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mimika AI session. We'll be talking about how we can automate, potentially automate quite a few, you know, quite a bit of RPA, uh, up to 70% of RPA as Mimika claims. Uh, we'll look at a quick demo with uh, Tuhin today. Uh, Tuhin is the co founder and CEO at uh, Mimika AI. So, um... Yeah, hi everyone. So as Nandan mentioned, I'm the CEO of Mimica. Um, we are an enterprise software company that automates the development and deployment of RPA using artificial intelligence. So when we came into the market about three years ago, uh, we recognized that there was a lot of manual work that went into the deployment of RPA. So the RPA technology is very powerful in terms of the execution of a process, but figuring out which processes to automate and how to actually build that bot is still uh, a highly manual process, highly time consuming process. And um, the goal for our company is to broaden the scope, broaden the reach of RPA. And the best way that we can see ourselves contributing to that effort is making it easier and cheaper so to get RPA into the hands of as many businesses as possible. So uh, for the webinar today, I'll talk a little bit uh, about the product. I'll give a little bit of a detail of how it works. And then I will also walk through a, a product demo at the end. So um, to start with the little introduction of the product, I'll kind of tell you how we think about RPA. So. From 30,000 feet, we see RPA a bit like juicing lemons. So there are, uh, every business is like a field of lemon trees and every lemon tree is like a business unit full of lemons, full of opportunities for automation. And kind of what we wish is that we could, you know, have a machine that would plow through this field and pick all the lemons and get all the juice out of them automatically. Uh, that would be kind of the, the, the grand vision or the ultimate reality in terms of uh, what automation can achieve in a business. And then what happens is when we get into the actual deployment of RPA, we learn that it's not exactly how it works. So figuring out which opportunities to go after and actually building an automation for those opportunities is a very manual and very slow process. And because it's so slow, we have to be very careful about which opportunities we choose. So rather than to go back to the analogy, having a machine that plows through the field and squeezes the juice out of all these lemons, it's more like you pick one up and you look at it and you squeeze it and shake it around a little bit and make sure that it's the perfect opportunity for automation. And then you put it on the conveyor belt for an automation to be built. And under the hood, what's happening basically is it takes months to get bots into production. So you've got these cycles of conversations between SMEs and business analysts and RPA developers, um, trying to ensure that they have an accurate understanding of the process, trying to ensure that when the bot goes into production, it's automating as much of the process as was intended. Um, yeah, it's just a very manual and very slow process. So that's kind of where Mimica comes in. Um, so Mimica had a relatively simple insight, which is instead of going to the person and asking them how they do their process, instead of asking them if a process is a good candidate for automation and relying on their knowledge, why don't we go to the source of truth, which is the process itself? So, you know, as the person's executing the process on the computer, they're performing actions, they're clicking on buttons, they're typing in text, and all of the information needed to determine whether a, a process is a good candidate for automation or what the bot should actually look like when it's built, all of that information is in the process itself. And that's fundamentally what Mimica does is we capture the process as it's occurring over a period of time. Um, we anonymize the data and then we use the data to generate a process map. And these maps contain everything needed for a developer to build an automation. So yeah, why do we build the product? It's to cut the time it takes to get bots into production. And we've shown 
with our clients that using Mimica, um, on average, it takes seven weeks to get bots into production. That's all the way from deciding what to automate, analyzing the process, understanding it, building the bot, UAT, you know, um, because we generate really accurate process maps, we can cut the time in all those different areas. And overall, uh, we significantly reduce the amount of time it takes to get a bot into production. And of course, you know, the goal of the company is to get from, so 75% is the best number that we hit in the best case scenarios. I'd say on average, it's more like 50%. And uh, we want to get that to 100%. That's kind of like the, the goal of the company. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is by identifying and prioritizing across many different business processes. So if you can imagine all the processes that you have in your business, um, Mimica can look at those processes and predict how difficult it would be to automate the process. What is the complexity of that process from an automation perspective? Um, and in that way, you know, if you know roughly the complexity and you know roughly how much time is spent in the process, then you can rank your processes by ROI and make sure that when you build an automation, you're, you're focusing on the right opportunity. Uh, that's something that a lot of businesses face challenges in and it can have a big impact on the number of hours that your RPA program saves on an annual basis. So just to kind of close the loop on the context and, and why our product exists, why people use Mimica, uh, one is to accelerate RPA to get more bots into production. I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. If you do 100 bots a year instead of 50 bots a year, that's going to you know, reflect very well on your automation program and, and it's going to be good for the business. Another angle of attack and another reason that people use the product is to improve their fundamental metrics around time to ROI, accuracy, and success rate. Uh, and the third is to discover new opportunities for automation. Um, and, you know, I think, I mean, it's built into the phrase process discovery. Of course, we want to find new opportunities for automation. And um, yeah, Mimica is certainly a tool that, that you can use to do that. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about how it works. Um, and, you know, one thing to say about Mimica is that it is an automated process discovery solution. So, you know, back in 2017 or 2018, when we started the company, we didn't have to explain this difference because we were the only process discovery tool on the market back then. And um, now there are a lot of new entrants into the space. You've got Salonis Task Mining, you've got UiPath, um, task capture, I believe it's called automation anywhere discovery bot. Um, I think Microsoft released a product recently. So a lot of these products fall into the category of what I would call manual process discovery, where essentially you have someone, uh, you know, you have the end, end user is manually uh, processing the data, grouping the data, um, editing the data. Uh, a lot of that stuff is, is happening manually. And um, yeah, with Mimica, we, we take similar approaches, but we use data science to automate the process. And that's probably, I would say the biggest difference between a company like Mimica and a company like um, any of the other process discovery uh, providers is that our team is 50% software and 50% data science. And all of the data science that we build is ultimately in service of that end goal of being able to automate uh, RPA end to end um, just by observing the process. So of course it starts with the collection of the data. So we have a recorder that sits on the computer and uh, records what people do. Uh, we have a combination of different technologies that we use on the recorder. So of course we use the UI automation um, framework to understand what actions the person is doing on the computer. Uh, so using the UI A framework, when somebody clicks on a button, we know what that button is. We can uniquely identify that button. Um, and we've also developed special integrations for uh, other categories of applications like SAP and Java that don't play as well with the UIA framework. Um, and then to handle Citrix, um, terminal emulation, and all of those other kind of use cases. And some use cases UIA doesn't work. Uh, we have computer vision as well. So it's really a combination of all those different technologies that allows us to understand uh, what's, what the user is doing on the computer. Uh, and then we use unsupervised learning to cluster and clean the data. So there are 
many different techniques. I can't possibly go into all of them today, but some of the important ones are alpha algorithm, which is used to generate the process map. Uh, we have a deep learning classifier that removes noise from the process and makes predictions about which uh, actions are pertinent to a process or relevant to a process and which ones are noise. And that's um, a classifier that has been trained over millions and millions of data points. Uh, and then we also use natural language processing to connect recordings across employees. I'll give a little bit of an example of how we do that. Uh, and then we use clustering to identify the variance in the process. Um, so, you know, we record a bunch of data, we try to figure out what, which uh, variants are important um, by, by analyzing many examples of the process. So to talk a little bit about the NLP, um, so yeah, processes can take place over multiple days or they can take place across people. Uh, so you might have an end-to-end -end process like order to cash, for example. Uh, so that's gonna span across you know, different units and, and different teams and different people are gonna be doing different roles. So in order to generate an end-to-end -end process map, you need to be able to identify which transactions are associated with, um, uh, which recordings are associated with which transactions. Um, and so what we do is use natural language processing to automatically identify that case identifier. It could be an invoice name, it could be the name of the account, it could be a file name, an invoice number. There's always gonna be some unique identifier that can uh, identify a particular transaction. And so, yeah, we use NLP to find that identifier automatically and then use that to, to stitch the recordings together. One thing to mention is that all the data that goes through Mimica is anonymized. So there's no confidential or personally identifiable information that is uh, persisted by Mimica. So all the data that flows through our system goes through an NLP pipeline, which identifies any sensitive data in the process. So personally identifiable information, uh, company names, uh, you know, any financial information, invoice amounts, all those things will be automatically identified um, in both the screenshots and the text. And the screenshots will be blurred and the text will be tokenized uh, before that data is persisted. So um, I'd like to show a quick demonstration of what the product looks like now that I've told you a little bit about how it works. Um, so here's the output of Mimica. This is our dashboard and you can see I've got a process here, an accounts payable process. You can see that there were three employees recorded. Uh, ease of automation is medium. That's based on the number of clicks, number of keystrokes, the number of decisions, number of applications, and a number of metrics that we use on the back end as well. For example, like how structured the data and the process is. We can also see which applications are used in the process, the distribution of the handle time and which days of the week. Um, so these, these kind of, this kind of information is just helpful for business analysts to determine whether a process is a good candidate for automation. So um, here we can see the average handle time, we can see the percent automatable and we can see the daily volume. And these three values can be used to determine essentially um, what the benefit case for a process is. And then on the other side, you have the ease of automation, which is the complexity. So you could imagine having many different processes here and being able to see on the graph all the different processes, uh, where they lie in terms of ROI and making sure that you're picking only the best ones for automation, the highest ROI opportunities based on the, the area under the, the point. And if we look at a, an actual process map, so now I can open up a map here and show you what that looks like. So Mimica maps look very similar to BPMN diagrams, uh, where you have start nodes, you have decision points, and you have the individual steps in the process. And um, yeah, one thing that is uh, different about Mimica is that we group the data up to a higher level of abstraction. So if you look at a step like this, you can see 
the actions that a person performs when they're doing that particular step. And furthermore, if you look at any of these actions, you can see the clicks and keystrokes that make up that particular action. So if you want to understand how a person is writing this invoice date, you can see that they click on the drop down there and then they click here. They select the month, which is the month of May. Um, there's an event here that shows that that month was selected and uh, they select the day. And you can see here that it says May 1st, 2020. So that's the date that was entered into this field. And, and in that way, the process map that you see here essentially becomes an instruction manual uh, for the RPA developer. They can simply click through each step in the process, um, look at the individual actions that are performed, look at all the clicks and keystrokes, and essentially build the automation step by step. Um, and that's what I mean when I say that Mimica's process maps contain everything needed for a developer to build an automation. Uh, as a developer, you can take this map and, and yeah, essentially build a bot that executes these exact steps. And uh, so you can start to see how from a process map like this, you could imagine being able to export this map into UiPath or Automation Anywhere or Blue Prism. Um, definitely something that we are excited about doing and, and uh, yeah, look forward to developing those integrations in the near future. So everything that you see here was generated by recordings. Um, if you look actually at the low level Click some keystrokes. You can see the Mimica recorder here actually running in the bottom right corner. So um, all of these came from, from recordings of the actual process. And from those recordings, we were able to generate a map that looks like this. And um, you know, when I say automated process discovery versus manual process discovery, the, the distinction that I drew earlier, what I meant by that is that this all happens with no additional involvement from the customer. So when our customers use Mimica, there's nobody on their end that is manually processing the data, um, you know, labeling the data, uh, sitting with SMEs and asking them long-winded questions and interviews, you know, no, none of that kind of stuff happens. So it's, uh, the only thing you have to do is click on the start button to start the recorder, click on the stop button to stop the recorder. And a week later, you'll have a process map that looks like this. So um, people use this process map for uh, RPA development. So once we generate the map, the RPA developer will take it and build an automation from it. And in the future, you know, we'd like to make that additional step a little bit easier. So we are working on integrations that yeah, enhance the tools that Mimic is used in conjunction with. So for example, um, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Salonis, Blue Prism. Uh, we want Mimica to be a flexible tool. We want you to be able to adopt it into your existing workflow. And we wanna accelerate any workflow that you currently um, execute when you're working on, on RPA. So that's uh, really important to us and we've, we've built lots of different kinds of exports in order to facilitate that. So things like being able to export the individual transactions, being able to export to a DOCX or a BPMN diagram. Um, and of course, all the data in the dashboard that I was showing earlier, we want to be able to export that in case you want to make your own charts and graphs. You know, that's also um, yeah, something, something important to us. Uh, and overall, yeah, we want to slot into your existing workflows as well as we can. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit of a brief presentation today because I know we have kind of a, a smaller audience on the call and I didn't go into quite as much detail as, um, yeah, as, as I would have probably if we'd had a larger audience, but uh, definitely appreciate everyone's time. And if there is interest, uh, what I can do is show a, a more detailed demonstration of how Mimica's algorithms work. So I do have a backend demonstration that I can give. 
um, where essentially we would show the AI algorithms making all the predictions required to generate the process map. So if people are interested in that, I'd be happy to schedule a follow-up call. Um, just please, you know, reach out to Nandan or reach out to me directly and, you know, we'll kind of validate that or kind of qualify the people that reach out and, and happy to do a, a smaller session after that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we'll kind of open it up to questions now and happy to answer anything I can. All right, thanks, Jihan. All right, let's open it up for questions now. Anyone has any questions? Okay, Hal is asking, how does it integrate with UiPath's task capture? Yeah, so um, Mimica, I wouldn't say it really integrates with UiPath's task capture. Uh, so if anything, you know, Mimica might be considered a, a competitor to UiPath task capture. Uh, but one thing to note about Mimica is that it is not um, vendor specific. So many of our clients have already purchased UiPath or they've already purchased Automation Anywhere or Blue Prism. And so uh, what people will do is they'll use Mimica to generate a process map and all of their, um, all of the maps that get generated live in this dashboard here and uh, you can export them to BPMN. So if UiPath's tool has a BPMN import, you could, you know, uh, there, there's already an integration that would happen there. But uh, generally speaking, we, we don't integrate directly with task capture. So the way you'd use Mimica is you'd record the process, you'd capture everything here, um, and then you would generate the process map. Uh, or sorry, you'd build the automation using the process map. Uh, so Talani had a question, does Mimica generate a PDD? Yes, Mimica does generate a PDD. So if you go up here and you click export docx, then it will um, generate a PDD from, from this process map. So it takes a couple minutes to generate, but you'll get essentially a Word document that looks, uh, I probably have an example of one that I can pull up. Oh, okay. Well, this one generated here, so I can just show this one. Uh, can the source of the data be offline? I mean, aggregate text files. So um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by offline, but the fundamental input into Mimica would be whatever the Mimica recorder captures. So um, the Mimica recorder is going to capture the clicks and keystrokes that the person's performing. So in that case, I don't think aggregate text files would be um, a, a valid input for Mimica. In terms of offline, we do do on-premise deployments. So you can deploy Mimica within your company's infrastructure, within the firewall. And so in that case, you know, it's, I guess, not necessarily offline, but the data would never leave the company's premise. And Talani, just so you can see, this is the PDD that Mimica generated. So you can see, you know, all the clicks and keystrokes here within the context of the actions that are performed by the user. And any comments that were left in the process map will get populated here. Um, and you can see that, you know, this is quite a long PDD. So uh, yeah, how you asked what the advantage is over UiPath. So you know, UiPath is what I would call manual process discovery. And uh, it's it, the task capture tool is quite limited in its functionality. So um, how, how UiPath works is uh, if you recorded 10 examples of a process, 10 transactions or 10 iterations, it would actually generate 10 different process maps. Um, Whereas with Mimica, we can look at hundreds or thousands of examples of the process and aggregate all that data in order to uh, yeah, generate, generate our map. So we're combining many examples of a process to generate the map and it's happening automatically. So whereas with UiPath, you have to kind of like 
manually do the recording and build the map and you, that would require SME resource and VA resource and you'll end up with you know maybe one transaction one example of how the process map occurs and critically the decision points would not be there so any RPA developer will tell you that the success of the RPA really hinges on the ability to capture the decision points so any technology out there, UiPath falls into this category, Automation Anywhere falls into this category, and Microsoft's tool falls into this category. Um, any tool that's out there that does not automatically capture the decision points in the process is not creating value in the RPA lifecycle. You still have to go back to the SME and figure out what those decision points are, why they're occurring. Um, that's where the brunt of the work is in RPA. And so, you know, you can you can generate a process map, you can generate a PDD, that's not that hard to do, uh, but figuring out what the variation in the process is, that's, that's a real challenge. And it can only come when you analyze tens, hundreds, or thousands of examples of the process. And in this case, we had you know, a relatively simple process, but you can actually see that um, you know, Mimica generated a 117 page PDD based on a process with a, you know, transaction time of, I think it was five minutes, maybe less than five minutes. So you can see how much business analyst time gets saved here. Do you need specialized skill set to get started with Mimica data engineers? No. So this is, again, a really important point of Mimica. Um, you, do, you do not need a specialized skill set to get started you don't need any additional resource. So you don't, you don't need, um, yeah, you don't need data engineers. You don't need business analysts. You just need someone who knows, who can basically click the start and stop button on the recorder. So that's like the key aspect of the mimic of training is um, clicking that start and stop button it's probably the enterprise software in history. There's only one button on it. And then um, in terms of the process map, you know, if you can, if you have familiar with familiarity with BPMN diagrams and you can read a process map, then you can interact with, with Mimica and, and understand Mimica. And then of course, if you want to get into deeper analysis, when you export to CSV, you know, there, there's lots of different kinds of cool data engineering or data science that you can do, but it's not required to get the core value of Mimica. So we put those exports in there for those, you know, power users that want to go off and do all kinds of crazy analyses on the process. But generally those kind of analyses are not done in RPA. So for example, if you wanted to mm -hmm. compare how two people are performing, uh, maybe a senior person and a junior person on the team, and you wanted to understand why the senior person was performing so much better, you could, export the CSV and start doing some comparisons in the data of, you know, the distribution of the individual actions and seeing which actions took longer for which person. I mean, there's an infinite amount of analysis that you could do. Um, and we just make that available, but it's absolutely not part of our core product and not required to get value. Uh, and how you had another question, what are the system requirements, enterprise, local install? So the recorder is very lightweight. Um, it's I think the file is maybe two and a half megabytes or four megabytes or something like that. Uh, we do have some basic system requirements. I, I think it's maybe um, eight gigs of RAM is recommended. And um, yeah, aside from that, you know, the processing speed is, it's usually not a big deal. Any kind of modern laptop will be able to handle it. So the recorder is very, very lightweight. Uh, it's essentially a pass through. So, you know, it's capturing data and sending it to a central server. On the central server, there is heavier processing happening. And so if we're doing on-premise deployments, then we would ask the customer to, um, you know, provide some servers. Uh, there are no crazy GPU requirements or anything like that. We do have um, GPUs that, that are training on the data, but for our customer engagements, especially on-premise deployments, we we deploy trained, pre-trained models. So um, the the impact from the system requirements or like architecture perspective uh, is is very low.
Okay, great, Atyuhin. Thanks for answering those questions. So I had um, a question in terms of um, how do you see this actually panning out in at your clients, right? Uh, who is using this? Is this is this output used by business analysts to generate another PDD, or are the developers directly using this one to generate RPA? Um, yeah. So how this works is, you know, I, I would say. Um, there, you, you could think of it like dramatically reducing a business analyst time. So if a business analyst is spending time in the software, um, you know, of course, I mean, there, there might be some questions that they have about the process and, you know, uh, there's, there's, it, it's not the case that the data can tell 100% of the story. So if you're a business analyst that's understanding the story of the process and you're trying to understand maybe how to modify the process, how to make it bot friendly, for example, there might be questions that come up, um, but you're seeing uh, a significant reduction in the business analyst time. So in the time that a business analyst can be producing one PDD, they can be producing five to 10 PDDs using Mimica. That's what we've seen in our client engagements. Um, and generally speaking, uh, the RPA developer, I would say in, in probably 60 to 70% of cases, the RPA developer can use the process map that gets generated by Mimica to build the automation as is, and there's no other work required. Um, and then for more complicated processes, you know, it, it could be the case that there's the delta between the as is process and the to be process is greater. And so in those cases, yeah, it is important to make some modifications to this process map. Um, you know, maybe adding some additional steps or changing the way certain steps occur. And we do have functionality in the software that allows for that kind of editing. Uh, but yeah, I would say that's maybe in like 30% of cases that there's some rework that's happening on this process map before it gets handed to the developer. Uh, and that's why we've been able to show you know, such significant reductions in the in the lead time for deploying RPA. So, like I said, um, you know, one of our largest clients is Dell, and we showed about a 55% reduction in their lead time for RPA deployments. And, you know, they have a massive RPA program. They deploy hundreds of bots on an annual basis. So um, that's mm -hmm. the kind of company that we like to work with, companies that, um, you know, they've deployed RPA, they know what deployments in RPA are like, uh, they understand the pain in their deployments and they're looking for tools to dramatically accelerate that or take that RPA program to the next level. So maybe I can address the question of automating RPA because I guess, you know, that's sort of what, what the vision of the company is. And, you know, I think that um, it's probably uh, not the case that you want to automatically generate an automation based on the process as it's occurring today. So that is uh, a, a common philosophy. And I think it's an important philosophy in the sense that you know, automation is about execution, but it's executing against a framework that has been defined by the process model. So it is important to make sure that the process model is right, uh, because if you implement automation and the process model itself is inefficient, then you are, in some cases, could even be amplifying the inefficiency in the process. So it's, it's very important to ensure that the process model is right. And uh, that's one of the reasons that we do generate end-to-end -end process maps with Mimica. You know, there are there are tools on the market that will just run continuously in the background, and if they find ten clicks and keystrokes that happen in the same order every time, they'll populate that into a dashboard and say, "Hey, we found a process. These ten sequences happen every time." And so, if you look, if they, you know, you put it on ten people's computers and they the software comes up with a list of 40 processes when everybody in the business knows they're, they're, they're not 40 processes there, they're maybe doing four or five processes. And so with Mimica, we really take that process oriented approach. And, and so what we wanna do is capture that process 
We want to be able to capture it automatically, but we do want that human intelligence piece of being able to re-engineer or improve the process in any way. And then once the process has been improved, at that point, we want to automatically be able to deliver an automation. So um, our goal is not necessarily to displace the human intelligence that's required to build an efficient system. That's something that I think will be difficult for AI to do for a very long time. And so we want that human intelligence to be part of the process. We just want to remove the manual work of capturing the process, documenting it, um, you know, uh, trying to understand, like make sense of what a person's doing and, and also that manual work of generating the code for a bot uh, that, that's going to execute the process. That's ultimately what we want to automate completely. Okay, Hal has one more question. Mm -hmm. He's saying, do you have a demo or a community version that he can show the client? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how, uh, if you can give me your email address, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to follow up with that. Yeah, I can share his email address. I do have his email. Address. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you an email after the meeting, how we can, we can figure that out. Okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, I had a follow up question. I was talking about it, but uh, when you say fifty five percent or seventy five percent, what do you mean? What do you? Yeah. So um, let me be a bit more specific about that. So we want to cut the amount of time uh, it takes to get bots into production. And so that's where that number is coming from is if you if you count from day, day, day zero, let's say is I want to deploy an automation. And then you have to go and talk to people and figure out where the good processes are. Once you've identified the good processes, you need to figure out what the process map looks like. Once you've figured out the process map, you need to build a bot according to that specification then you need to test that bot in production. And um, you, generally speaking, at least like without tools like Mimica, when you put the bot into production, you realize that you didn't capture the process in its entirety and you have to pull it off the line and iteratively improve the bot until it, it automates enough of the process that you're happy with it and you can move on to the next project. So we look at that entire pipeline and we say that there's a lot of inefficiency there. And we think that the root cause of all of the inefficiency is the cap, the capture of the process. If you could capture the process more accurately, you could more quickly identify where the best candidates for automation are. You could generate faster and a process map. And because that process map is more accurate to the process, the bot spends less time in UAT. So that's, that's like the main value that the product creates today is because we can accurately capture the process very quickly, the time it takes to decide what to automate, the time it takes to generate a process map, and the time it takes to build the automation is lower. Um, and now you could say that like in the uh, discovery and mapping phase, you see maybe a 95% reduction in man hours. So um, like I said, with Mimica, business analysts aren't doing any work, right? All, all you have to do is give a recorder to an SME and then a week later, two weeks later, you have a process map. And unlike other providers, you know, I just want to stress this as much as I can. Unlike other providers with Mimica, you do not then have to sit and work with the data and label the data and tag it and all of that stuff. That's not how Mimica works. There's no incremental time required by the business analyst to process the data. You get the process map and then you can start building an automation from it. And when the developer starts building the automation, you know, our NPS scores are extremely high because developers consistently tell us that our process maps are more complete than what business analysts traditionally produce. So with a BA's PDD, traditionally, you, your first click will be right, your second click will be right, your third click will be right. And then on the fourth one, when, when the developer's programming it, there's some screen that appears and the developer didn't expect it. They didn't know how to handle it. 
Um, Mimica is able to capture all of those different errors that can occur in the process, you know? So you have a duplicate invoice detected error. That's one error that we captured when recording many examples of the process. Does it happen frequently? No, it only happens 2.6% of the time, but there are lots of different these of these kinds of errors. So here's another one, invalid value error. So invalid value error, duplicate invoice error. There are many different examples of these kinds of errors that can occur in the process. And I think in this particular process, we captured like 30 or 40 of those errors. So that's shortening the development time by 30, 35%. And when we're able to export our process maps into the RPA software directly, we'll see an even an even greater reduction in that time. Uh, but based on what we have today, we're showing a you know if you take ninety five percent in process mapping and thirty percent in development, and development takes longer than mapping. So if you average all that out, you get to you know fifty five to seventy five percent depending on on the process and the engagement. Okay, very good. I think we don't have any more questions. So thank you, Kuhin. We'll end it there. I okay. like I like the tool and I like that it you know, provides open standards BPM as an output. And I do wish I do see that you could integrate it with other tools and probably you know generate uh, RPA code itself directly in future. And thank you for clarifying in terms of what you know what do you mean by manual. Uh, process discovery versus a automated process discovery. That was very helpful. So thank you so much to him. Uh, that was a great presentation. Thank you, Nandan. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Talani and Hal as well for all your great questions. 